God said, let there be light, and there was light. Bollywood said, let there be light, and there was circuit. And this high voltage circuit has given us many a thunderous performance. Please welcome the powerhouse of talent, Arshad Varsi. Arshad, hey, thanks, Kaun. That was a welcome good intro. Welcome to Starry Nights. Thank you very much. But I already you? feel starry at the moment. <laughs> it's a lovely intro. Tell me, Tell me uh, how do you look back at your journey so far? I think it's been quite nice. Mm. I am, uh, I'm, I'm a very content person mm. by nature. Mm. So I always see the good side of life and everything. Mm. And yes, I think it's been pretty good. I, I, I'm happy. I have a, uh, I have a good personal life. And I think I have a very uh, nice uh, professional life, as you just said. A lot of respect I'm getting for the kind of work I've done, which makes me feel wonderful. Uh, you said it has been quite good. So do you mean to say it could have been better? Oh, anything can be better and anything can be worse. No. So I would say I, I cannot be unhappy. Like, mm. I always think about it. And, you know, many a times I get asked this question that, you know, wouldn't you want to be bigger? Wouldn't you want to be here? Wouldn't you want to be there? But I have a very philosophical answer to that, which is actually... Well, that's how I think, so I will tell you what I think. I think all of us, you know, in life, we usually get what we want, what mm -hmm. we really desire. And mm -hmm. if your desire is really strong, mm -hmm. you know, and if you really want that, you... The whole universe will... Well, 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 the universe really doesn't give a <laughs> but <laughs> it's your desire that really works. The universe don't care about you. Uh, if the universe really cared, we would have... Uh, things would be different. So, mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. so the thing is... That I, as a person, I there's a certain kind of life I wanted. Okay. Like when I was when I was starting my life and I was uh, uh, working my way through earning money, uh, I wanted some things. I wanted a nice, cute little bungalow. I wanted a couple of cow, cars. I need a. I wanted a big farmhouse with a lake, and I wanted to go. You know, these are the fantasies you have. And I wanted horses there, and I wanted to do this, and I wanted to go boating with my kids and go trekking. So that's the way I am. I studied in a boarding school, which was a big, big countryside kind of a place. So in my heart, I'm quite a cowboy. So I am that. I want horses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, if I, if I compare that to, say, Shah Rukh. Mm -hmm. Shah Rukh always wanted to perhaps, I may, not, I may be wrong, but I'm sure he wanted to be this very successful uh, star. He wanted the world to know him. He wanted everybody... To, to know him, he wanted to be the number one star. Exactly what he got. What happens with, in life, I think, is what you really, really want deep inside, you tend to move in that direction. The other things are periphery. You, you, you like want it because everybody wants it, so should I want it? But in your heart, you've already decided. It's already there. So that's how I believe it happens. And you're working so, towards that. Yes, you subconsciously are moving in that direction. You studied in a boarding school. Is that the reason why you want to spend the maximum amount of time with your kids? I think so. Mm -hmm. I really think so. You know, it's, it's all one big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I do. Like, I personally did not spend a lot of time with my parents. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very sad thing. It's, I'm not very proud of that. Because I went to boarding when I was eight years old. And... Uh, I, I was there till I left school and all the time, and, and it's a serious boarding. It's not the boarding that you have today, you which is so boarding. fancy <laughs> that you work, you go to boarding for a few days and you come back home for a few days, you got an AC room. I was in a dormitory of 32 kids okay. and we had to really survive, you know, all of mm -hmm. us. And it was a real hardcore, it was a British boarding school, it was a boarding school. Mm -hmm. So, and I was there all my life and we would get our holidays which were like 15 days a month and stuff like that. At that time you used to yes. go to your parents. Right. And so my interaction with parents have not been that great. Which, I mean, that, that doesn't mean that I don't know them or I don't respect them. Everything all great. But, uh, like I'm overly possessive about my kids. I, if I don't see them for some time, I panic. You just like to fool with your kids and have a good time, I or you also take their lessons? And no, I don't take the lessons. Not at all. No, because that is my job. Simple. Right. I'll tell you why. Yeah. But I'm not as smart or as educated as Maria is, and I am Till very study, good. I I've just done ICSE. I okay. left, and I wanted to. You get left on after twelfth or uh, after tenth. I just did my ICSE, oh, that's it. Okay. I just wanted to work. I just wanted to work. I was educated in a good school, so I speak well. <laughs> I can fool people. I could do that. Yeah, the thing is, you've got, to prior, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to divide and rule and you've got to get things right. So Maria is uh, a very bright person. She was stood first in a class all her life 
and uh, economic students and uh, all that stuff. So she takes so care of she it. Has. How bright are your kids as students? Uh, my, my, so I take care of the sports part. Okay. Because I was brilliant in sports. Okay. I was very good uh, with, with all things like uh, uh, all artistic things and sports and paintings and drawing that's and stuff that's mine. So okay. for all that, they come to me. Anything to know about sports, they'll talk to me. And anything about studies, they talk to Maria. So okay. we are sorted. Uh, in this industry, it's uh, very easy to get typecast. Right. You know, right. Uh, were you in fear of getting typecast ever? When I came in, no, Komal, the fact is that I was, my fear was just to finish that film mm -hmm. and not be ridiculed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was my fear because I did not come from a uh, trained background. I was True. not an actor. I had never acted before. True. I was not trained actor. I was nothing. So uh, for me, it was all new. And my entire uh, mind was purely on the basis of just do good enough that when you're walking on the street, people don't say this idiot wanted to be an actor. That's yes. all I was that interested was in. I was just there. Uh, when I started acting and I realized, my God, this is easy. And I don't know about easy. I said, but this comes naturally to me. I don't have a problem doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying doing it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I never thought too hard about it. Typecast this. I didn't even know about it. Let me, let's be honest. My knowledge of the industry was pretty nil. So I didn't know that happens. You get typecast or this happens or that happens. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it's later, gradually, that I started learning the whole process. And by then, it was too late. Which is, <laughs> I mean, I should have learned that way long back. <laughs> <laughs> Big mistake, but that's what happened. You start learning. The thing is, yes, you do get typecast, and it's it's somehow, uh, I, it's very weird. But very few uh, directors and very few producers uh, can actually see through and look through your uh, typecast image and look at the actor. Arshad, uh, there must be a wish list of things you want to still do. Oh, yeah. Of course, you've got a long way to go, yeah. plenty of years yet, but there must be some quick... Uh... I think I'm going to be acting perhaps all my life, I think so. I'm I think sure. I, I, yeah, I, I feel like that. I'm that kind of a person. I probably, I'm going to start doing elder brother, then uncle, then father, then grandfather. Father. I'll keep going. <laughs> One of those days. I think I, what I really want to do is I want to direct a film. A film? Um, yeah, a couple of things, but connected to movies, yes, I want to direct a film sooner or later. I would like to do that. You know, you turned a producer. Yeah. And uh, why did you stop? Because oh, every be actor seems to have turned a producer. Yes, now. yes. For me, I'll tell you what happened was, uh, the fact is, I, I, I think I'm a great producer, mm -hmm. but a terrible businessman. Okay. Now, that's a lethal combination. <laughs> it's very bad to be like that. Because uh, well, either, you know, if you're a good producer, you better be a good businessman so that you can control yourself. Mm -hmm. But being a bad businessman, I was like, yeah, yeah. You want to blow up that guy? Yeah, yeah, blow it. What do you mean? You want so many people? Yeah, go for it. You want to spend so much? Do it, do it. Which is not a bright thing to do as a producer, as a businessman. So I realized. But no, if you I'm come up the hard way, one would know the value of money. How come you were a bad no, business? No, it's. Uh, I don't think it's like that. I hmm. think. I think uh, you you know the value of small denomination of money. Okay, this was big <laughs> money. <laughs> you lose perspective. <laughs> Just kidding. And therefore, you decided to just uh, mm. give up production? Not really give up. Mm. I, I tend to not give up anything. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's maybe later, maybe later when some other thing, something excites me, mm. or if the whole equation is right, and mm. or I have better, smarter people who can handle mm. the business part of me, and I can handle the creative part of me, something like that, something. Mm. But mm. as I said, never, I would never say never. Mm -hmm. Never say never. Never. Uh, what gave you the confidence that you can be a Bollywood actor? I became an actor really by default. Mm -hmm. And I'm here. Well, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, but yeah, but if somebody tells me, okay, we would like you to play Superman, I'll say, dude, get a life. <laughs> I know, I know, dude, come on, you can't do that. Yeah. So you, you are aware that you can do certain kinds of roles? Yes, of course, certain, of course. Certain kinds yes. you can't do. Yeah, I mean, certain kinds as in when it is absolutely, it's like you ask me to play a basketball player, uh, then I'll have a problem. If you ask me to play a basketball player who was a short person, I'll do it. <laughs> It's as simple as that. You got to, you got to, you know, know your facts in life. You've got to know yourself. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're most comfortable doing in front of the camera, or everything? Everything. I mm -hmm. swear, this sounds so pompous. Every time I say it, I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> but really, not, no kidding. Mm -hmm. Acting does not scare me. It does not scare me. 
what scene I'm doing does not scare me. Is it going to be a dramatic scene? Is it comedy? Is it this? You, if you see, if you ever shoot me when I'm working, you'll be surprised that before, okay, in Seher, there's a sequence where I die. It's a very dramatic sequence. Before that sequence, uh, Shushan and me were laughing and we were cracking out about something. And then we did that shot. So that's how I am. <laughs> switch on, switch right. off? Yes, and it absolutely doesn't bother me. What kind of scene? Nothing, it doesn't bother me. I'm fine. I'm comfortable with everything. You know what's tough? is comedy. Comedy is tough. Comedy tires you. Just you get tired by the end of the day. Uh, say, for example, had I started my career with a serious film rather than comedy, you know, or let's say, let's say, let's say Chandrachud and me started our career together. If he would did my role and I did and his, role, his role, huh? I would have probably been doing serious film and he, poor guy, would have been doing comedy. <laughs> you understand? It's just that. So it's just that chance that you it's were in that. a comic role. I was, I was there and people enjoyed what I did, so they wanted to see more of it. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't stop. Mm. You know, that's how it is. Till, oh, many a times you want to say, that's it, many actors do that. You put a stop, you say, that's it, I'm not going to do it anymore. No, I didn't do it. But did you have a plan B in place? No. Not at all. I never had a plan A also. <laughs> plan B. You never planned. It's like, exactly. It's a long way off. I never had a plan. Are either. you as funny in real life as you are on screen? I think so. I mm. think I would. I'm, I don't know. I have a sense of humor, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Maria is fed up of. But <laughs> but, but, but when, we, when we are together, friends mm. and all, yeah. So my co-stars and all enjoy working with me because I'm. I like. I like a happy atmosphere. So when I'm working, mm -hmm. it's a happy atmosphere. Everybody's enjoying them. There's mm -hmm. some jokes happening. I, I don't, like, I, I, I keep getting asked a very silly question about, uh, so do you do pranks? Mm -hmm. I find that very lame. I think mm -hmm. we are too grown up to do, to do pranks. pranks. Exactly. <laughs> so I keep telling this and I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> pranks are for kids. Kids, yeah. <laughs> grown ups have a sense of humor. humor. <laughs> so yes, yes, we do have a sense of humor. And you tend to uh, spend more time with your film colleagues and film friends or no. non-film friends? No, non-film films. Uh, yeah, I, I spend more time with my kids. Yeah, but other than home. kids, if if you are with friends, yes, they are, they are. Most of them are non-filming. They are, they, they are, they are bankers. Mm -hmm. They're doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, they're ad filmmakers. Uh, those are the photographers. And there are so, bad filmmakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So these are the guys. Mm -hmm. But yes, I, that doesn't mean that I don't have friends in mm -hmm. the in the film fraternity. Mm -hmm. I do have, but mm -hmm. I also know that they're all busy. Mm -hmm. But then uh, when we have a little get together at home, like, like Christmas perhaps, you mm -hmm. know, so uh, yes, then people like Ritesh and all these guys and Subhash and Raju and all these guys do land up. And uh, like dancing gets you alive, you know? I love it. Because yeah. you're so good at dancing. Uh, is there any time you have felt intimidated by a dance? By a dance? Yeah. No, no. I, the one like, which has been uh, for the movie supposed to do? Yes, yes. Oh, my first film. Yes. Oh, my first film. Really? Oh my God. Uh -huh. That was the toughest. Why was it so bad? I think you were that was a good the dancer. toughest thing I've ever done. No, because that time what happened was huh? I was used to a certain kind of dancing. Okay. And here okay. I'm doing okay. something else. <laughs> what was happening to me mm. was I was getting embarrassed to another level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because my uh, lower half had a mind of its own. <laughs> because I said, I'll get hernia with this amount of pelvic thrust that I've been asked to do. So, and we had a South Indian choreographer. He, he was going nuts. And then there were things which I had to do, which I've never done and I would never do. And I couldn't fathom somebody actually choreographed. I'll tell you what. We had Simran and me. And we, all, we both of us go chest bump. Boom, like that, both of us. <laughs> I am, and I was dying of embarrassment, and I didn't know what to do. The similar to me, said, "Just do it." Just she understood. She must have. She, she was a seasoned yeah, person. Yeah, exactly. she was in the movies. She must have understood said, that you're feeling yeah, embarrassed. She, she could see that I'm dying. She said, "Just do it. Just don't think about it. Just think I'm a guy and just do it." <laughs> so it was weird for me. It was really tough. It was really tough. It took me some time to get over that and just, just go and get it. Just do it. Arshad, would you uh, say that circuit of Munna yeah. Bhai was the best thing to have happened in your career so far? When I did that film, mm -hmm. all right, this character was, he was just five guys standing behind Sanju. He was one of them. One of them. Okay. Uh, but few more lines. Okay. All right. So in reality, it was one of the most risky move on my part. Risky ever. career move. <coughs> career move mm -hmm. on my part ever. Mm -hmm. And I said, God loves me. And... Uh, 
So it all worked. I, you know, when I knew it was a good film, mm -hmm. I knew it would do well for mm -hmm. uh, Sanju. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I knew it's nothing's going to happen in my life. Absolutely nothing. I'm going to go way notch down. Post this, I'll be doing a goon role for a long time. And despite that, you accepted the offer. I liked Raju very much. Okay. <clears throat> I liked him very much, and I was doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I was doing nothing in my life that was worth uh, talking about or anything like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, yeah, well, do it. And I did like Rajwal. I thought he was a great guy and he did give me the freedom to uh, do what I want to do. And so improvise. I said, yeah. So I said, big deal, yeah. What am I doing? Just go ahead and, as I said, Correct. I, I'm still like that. So everything you thought came true. Additionally? Yes. Additionally, me. Suck it was... Additionally, me. I never thought people would like me. And I knew, uh, not me, if anybody in that place... Mm -hmm would say, good film, if it helps, it helps Raju and Sanju. Nobody would Nobody have dreamt else. that it could help you so much. Nobody else. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't. And when, did, and when didn't. do we get to see the next... Uh... We were starting shoot in uh, 2018. I think as soon as Raju finishes... Uh, the Sanjay Dutt biopic. Yes, yes, which is, should be end of the year. So, okay, Arshad, now it's time for some fun. Not that we've not had fun on the show. Of course, we've laughed a lot. But uh, it's time for some more fun and greater fun. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. And the first set of questions you have to answer in yes or no. Okay, okay. That sounds good because it's rapid fire, something, you know, which when I hear that... It, it's the biggest problem for anybody who's honest. <laughs> Big trouble for honest people. <laughs> have you ever felt that you have been typecast in this industry? Yes. Do you wish you had a godfather in the industry? No. Have you ever done a film only and solely for money? Yes. <laughs> have you ever done Golmal in real life? No. Never? No. Not even as a kid? No, yeah. Balding. Get whipped. <laughs> Have you ever thought to yourself, Maine pyar kyun kiya? No, never. Too happy. <laughs> yeah, love is a beautiful thing. Uh, now, the next set of questions, your answers have to be in one word. One word. Or probably two I'll or three try. words. Okay. Yeah. The most dhamal moment of your life? I'm birth of my children. The most faltu moment of your life? Film called Faltu. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that nobody knows about you? Nobody. Nobody knows about me. Uh, I'm actually quite a serious guy. Jaya Bachchan knows about it. Really? Yeah. She and, told me. Uh -huh. You know, all this facade of humor that you do, I know how serious you are deep down. I'm like, okay, let's just stop there. The one person you credit your success to? Oh my God. I can't, I don't know about credit, but I thank uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bachchan because, and jo Joy Augustine for getting me into this profession. Into this industry. Yeah. The most cliched answer you've ever given in an interview? Uh, oh my God. Uh, uh, this is a great film. <laughs> yeah, I am. Now we're going to talk about some firsts in your life. Whatever comes to mind first. Okay. First day of shooting? Uh, scary. First paycheck? Very happy. First celeb crush? Oh God, uh, Neetu Singh. Wow. First date? Oh, I never went on a date in my life. Really? Yeah, isn't that odd? Yes, I was talking about this in some other interview and they were like, huh, really? Yeah. But how come? Purely because I've always been in a relationship. So I have one relationship to the other to the other. So never really had that gap in the middle for dating. <laughs> First I'll start kiss. that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late. Uh -huh. First kiss was a misfire in school. <laughs> First breakup. Uh, yeah, that was my, my, my school girlfriend, you know, so yeah, that's my, I only had one girlfriend in my entire school career, can you believe that? Okay. I'm a very good guy, I'm thinking, I know, I know, it's not I happening, know. this is not the way to lead your life. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, my only one girlfriend. Uh, and the first breakup that, was? Uh, with her only. No, but it was? Uh, painful? Huh? Oh yeah, of course. Very of painful. Course, it's always painful. Breakups are always painful. Uh, and now the next set of questions, what if? What if, okay. what if you were a dance teacher and had to give lessons to one Bollywood star, whom would you like to teach? I want to teach Deepika Padukone even if she's a good dancer. I don't care. Well, I still want to teach just to hang around with her. <laughs> she is so Does she good. know that? Does she know that? I don't think she knows that. She's so She'll good. know it now. She's so talented. So talented. Yes, oh my God. Is. What if you were single for 24 hours, mm -hmm. what would you do? What would I do? Date. <laughs> yeah, I think probably I'd miss out on that. 
see single for 24 hours is a scary thing because whatever you do after 24 hours you have to pay the price for that <laughs> now that's a very tricky question what if you turned into your wife for 24 hours how would you spend those 24 hours meditation <laughs> i would calm myself down <clears throat> maria is so hyper my god i was like, calm down <laughs> om <laughs> like that. what if you could be born either rich mm. or intelligent which would you choose oh there's a very funny thing to it mm -hmm. uh it's it's a, this joke do you want to yeah, do you want to be rich or you want to be intelligent mm -hmm. so you said i want to be rich why you don't be because yeah because rich people hire Hi, intelligent just people to work for them <laughs> <laughs> well on that intelligent note uh, arshad we let you go thank you so much for being on thank the show thank you it was, it was a pleasure a, talking absolutely. to you thank absolutely you. But I, before you leave yes. we've got a certificate for you oh my god <laughs> cid yep so cid is very good characters in disguise nice <laughs> there is a certify that you are a box full of characters in disguise see i how nice i had a doormat in my house uh -huh. which a friend of mine bharat dabolkar gave it to me uh -huh. it says is ghar ke sabhi patra kalpanik hai oh <laughs> <was> so nice <laughs> and as a token of our appreciation uh, there's a small gift hamper for what you. are you saying i want to come back for the show <laughs> i am coming back now only this thank you this so me. much thank you thank so you. much love thank you. gifts and hampers and everything all right great good kids getting educated about sexuality when i went there i was the only father they were all women they were only mothers <laughs> landed me myself and my son both are dying of my son like why did you have to come dada <laughs> for 24 hours if you're single and nobody knew what you were going to do <laughs> then i would say ah probably the dad has that